I'm just going to wait until the computer says 630. We'll be right with you. Get my cough drops ready. Okay, good evening. Good Wednesday evening. It looks really nice out right now, and I guess we're going to get some nasty weather. So um, we are thankful that you're here tonight, whether you're here with us live or if you're watching this later. Um, we are just thankful that you're here and are interested in what we have to say and to present. I am Kelly Owens. I'm the guidance department chair, and with me tonight are Paige Lumpkins and Adam Westner. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we will be going through some, um, <coughs> excuse me, we'll be going through some um, what we feel are very important um, essential things that your, you and your juniors need to hear about. Um, I'm going to turn it over to one of you for a minute while I get this worked out. Sure. And so, um, Mr. Westner, I'll let you kind of do the intro. I'm going to pull up the presentation. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, so we're going to get the uh, slide presentation. Really appreciate you joining us. Um, kind of some of the things we're going to be reviewing uh, through this are the updated graduation seals. Make sure everyone has um, a, a good uh, understanding of them. We're working through them, uh, tracking them, doing all those sorts of things. And again, the general comment for the most part, none of your students are really going to have any issues with this but we're there to track them if they are we'll make some special plans and figure out a plan um the junior conferences uh and to-do lists we're meeting with your uh your juniors and we're providing them with a couple uh key things for them to do so we'll review that um right now uh the college application process just kind of do a quick kind of review of a preview of what's to come um, go over some testing updates. We want to make sure that you have a good a sense of Naviance. Um, uh, so especially, uh, you know, at the end of this junior year into senior year, that becomes a lot more important that students are, uh, we're going to ask them to be uh, accessing uh, and taking care of stuff. Um, we have, you know, we are going to have some uh, in the fall um, application sessions, uh, both in the classroom and then application help sessions during our timber time. Um, and really just, you know, this can be a really stressful uh, experience at, at times. We hope it's not. Uh, we hope it's fun and exciting, but undoubtedly it's going to be a little bit stressful. Uh, so we're, you know, just we're, we're here. We're here to take them through academically, socially, mentally. Um, it might be your, it's going to be your kiddo's first time through, uh, but it is not ours. So um, we're here to help them through that process. As many questions as, as they have, we'll, we'll be there to, uh, to help them through. Okay, I think I've got myself back together. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that allergies, cold, whatever this is, um, the more you try to to hold a cough back, it seems to just make it worse. So I apologize for that, but thank you, Mr. Wessner. Um, so junior conferences, they are going on now. Um, and I do wanna back up, uh, Mrs. Lumpkins and Mr. Wessner were in the junior English classes going through a, a, a group session, a group presentation. So a lot of what we're sharing with you tonight is taken from those presentations. I had to miss those. Um, I was at Cleveland Clinic with my husband who had had surgery. So I unfortunately was not able to do that, but Mr. Westner and Mrs. Lumpkins did. So your students have heard a lot of this information already. So um, the junior conferences, it's the individual conferences with your students. We go over the credit checks and the counts and, and, and making sure that they're on track. We, they have a copy of their transcript. They get a copy of their transcripts. They get to see that. We go over the testing information. You know that all of your juniors just took the, the statewide ACT on March 1st, and we're waiting on those results to get back. Um, they Part of the Naviance to-do list was updating their resume. And Mrs. Lumpkins will go into a little bit more about what Naviance is um, here in a couple of slides um, down the line here. College searching. This is the time that we want to make sure, and, and, and maybe your students have already started the college searching. 
um, but, but making sure in earnest that they're looking at the college searching and they're, they're identifying colleges that they feel might be a good fit for them. And we are here to help them with that as well. College visits, hopefully, some of you have been on campuses. Um, you've taken your students on campuses. They seem to be opening up again. And um, we really stress the importance of college visits. A lot of our seniors the last two years have missed out on those. And we're very happy to hear that colleges are opening up again for those college visits. And we understand, I've, I've had this question from a couple of parents is, you know, should I take my child out of school? And, and that's hard because, you know, with AP exams coming up and other exams coming up, it's the last quarter. It's always best if you can visit a college when it's at full tilt, when there's all the students are on campus. But if that's not possible, then by all means, if there's another time that you can go, then make sure that you're getting, you know, boots on the ground on those campuses so your students can get a feel for what it feels like to walk that campus and to see those buildings. And, and um, so those college visits are really important. We are in the process of scheduling. In fact, today, all of the students were able to look at their course requests and verify that they're correct. So we will be working through those. So that senior year schedule is important. Students should not be pulling back. They need to be you know, finishing strong that senior year. So we'll be talking to your juniors about that and hopefully they're talking to you about that too so that they are challenging themselves but that they are also taking classes that are appropriate for them. And then letters of recommendation. Students should already be identifying um, teachers that they want to write letters of recommendation for them. And they can even start asking them now, or maybe over the summer, they can reach out to those teachers and see if they can secure those letters of recommendation. Um, so those are, that's just kind of, those are the topics that we cover with your juniors throughout those conferences. Um, the next slide, we're going to get into the graduation diploma seals, and I do want to, before Mrs. Lumpkin starts, if you're confused by these, join the crowd. You are not the only ones, because I'm on a couple of um, school counselor Facebook groups, and this is all the buzz. I, I don't understand, you know, who's creating these. But let me tell you, Mrs. Lumpkins has a system that is, you know, she's kind of our tech guru, our data guru, and she's looking over all of those things and, and keeping track of them. And then Mr. Western and I can also communicate that with our students, but she's going to take you through and explain these to you. And um, but just know that we're on top of it. We are we are on top of it and keeping track of those. So, Mrs. Lumpkin. Thank you, Mrs. Owens. So for graduation, there are three steps now. The first one is curriculum. We've been talking about that one for all three and a half years, three, all two and a half, three years so far. And so the next step is um, competency. And so there are two tests. One is in algebra and the second one is in English two. Students have to earn a 684 on that, on those two tests. The third step is readiness. Um, readiness is identified through diploma seals. And there are 12 diploma seals. Students only need to earn two of them, not 12, not 11. They have to have two. They can have more, but really the important part is two. And so one of the two must be a state defined seal. And the other one can be defined by the state or defined by Oakwood schools, lo locally defined. So some state defined seals. One of them is the science seal that's based on getting a three on the biology state test. The second one is the citizenship seal. It is based on getting a three on the American history and a three on the American government test. The college readiness seal is based on the SAT or ACT. So for the ACT, it's an 18 English, 22 reading and 22 math. The honors diploma seal is based on earning an honors diploma. Um, the seal of biliteracy literacy is by getting competency or actually it's getting proficiency, a three on the English two test and also something like a four or a five on an AP exam in French or Spanish or there are other assessments for other languages. The technology seal is based on taking a college credit plus course in computer science, technology, something like that. Or if there are some courses that are Oakwood courses that can count and earning a B or better in those courses. The Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal is a whole process um, that a particular student might work through. Same with industry credentials. That's based more for um, for career um, technical education students. So they have programs that have tests that are linked to those, those programs. And then military enlistment is someone enlisting in the military, or um, there are schools that have um, a junior ROTC that also qualifies for those students. But 
only one of those seals has to be met. Then the locally defined seals are community service. Um, so it's, it's doing 120 hours of community service in grades nine through 12. The fine and performing arts seal is for either being in a season or year of a performing art like the Dayton Ballet or for taking a year of fine arts courses during high school nine, grades nine through 12. And then the student engagement seal is being involved in, involved in a club sport or activity for a season or year. So like a football season or an academic decathlon full year season, um, something like that. And so in the end, we're monitoring each student and where they are. They have to have at least one state defined seal and then a second seal that's either state defined or locally defined. And so if your student is um, a student who is in need of seals, we are talking with your student. Um, your student was likely invited to do some retesting, but the majority of all students are right now in a beautiful spot toward earning their seals. It is the first year that they're required um, as part of the graduation requirements. And every school is working with their students to figure out how do we make sure every student is in a good spot and your kiddos are. Uh, I'm gonna take over uh, for the time being, just talk a little bit about testing coming up. Um, just some different uh, lingo you guys might hear uh, through this process. Uh, test optional has become um, uh, very popular. Uh, the vast majority of colleges the last uh, two years have been uh, what's known as test optional. So students have the ability to uh, submit test or not. Um, and they are not disadvantaged in the, in the process in any way, shape, or form. So um, colleges have been doing this. They're getting better and better. Uh, some are very comfortable with this process, and we're leaning towards uh, going this route anyway. Um, and COVID has just pretty much accelerated that process. So you guys are going to find a lot of schools that are uh, continuing on with their test optional policies. Uh, there could be some schools that are going to go back to requiring those scores. Um, so that's just something as your, uh, your students are uh, exploring those different colleges, going on those visits, listening to those admission presentations, that will be something to just kind of be thinking about. Um, there is also, it's a little more rare, but there are some schools that are test blind where they're not going to consider test scores at all in any way, shape or form. Um, I don't, I'm sure Mrs. Lumpkins has probably one off the top of her head. I can't think of one off the top of my head right at this moment in time. Um, and then again, some schools may be going back to the traditional submitting those test scores. Uh, those scores would be submitted directly from um, either ACT or SAT. There's a lot of data that comes with that that those colleges like, um, like to have. Um, so there could be some colleges that are going to be shifting back. Um, we don't know all of the schools. Some schools have already announced um, on, on whether that is. Some schools are still weighing those. And so we will be helping to communicate and work that out uh, with your students, um, whether or not, you know, is it test optional, is it not? Is it appropriate to send scores? Maybe it's not necessary. Um, so we're here to help through that process. Uh, upcoming dates um, for the ACT. The next ACT is June 11th. Uh, we do offer that here in our building. Um, that registration deadline is May 6th. Um, I was just checking um, uh, students right now, there's plenty of room. Uh, if that's something your student wants to target, I do encourage uh, you to, to sign up um, through their ACT account, which they uh, should have created already. Um, that would be a, a good thing. That June 11th date does tend to fill up um, because bigger schools like Centerville and Fairmont end up, they don't offer that test. So we, I end up testing a lot of those students. So uh, if you want to test here, strongly encourage you to uh, sign up relatively soon. There is a July 16th one as well. Coming back starting, uh, you know, in the fall, we are going to be offering, the July is not available here, but there are other uh, places. Uh, we will be offering the September 10th um, date uh, here as well. That's the first uh, eligible ACT in the fall. We try to make sure uh, we always offer that so uh, students, if they decide to send test scores, they have plenty of time to get those uh, to those places. And um, again, they should already have student accounts through there, uh, through taking the ACT here March 1st with us for the state test. Um, SAT dates, 
There is a May 7th date that is not offered here, but that deadline is April 26th, that that's something that your student would like to do. We are offering the June 4th test. Uh, that's a May 25th deadline for registration. Um, and then the, we offer the very first test that they, uh, that they have the following August, uh, on August 27th. So it's, it's pretty quick, but um, we have that there. Um, they can go and register through their college board accounts, which many of them have those because of PSAT already. Um, so if there's any questions with that, we can help them through that process. And so I'm gonna talk about Naviance in just a second. Um, on my way there, one little update with respect to um, testing in general, the ACT scores from the ACT from March 1, some students scores are available right now. Some student scores are not quite yet available, but they will be within the coming couple of weeks. So there was an email that was sent out about that. If a student isn't sure if they've linked to their accounts, they can follow the guidelines to do that. And if scores are not appearing, we did put the ACT number into that email as well, just in case. So that way any student is able to see their scores from that March 1st test. If a student tested with accommodations or tested late because they had to do the makeup day, their scores will likely take a little bit longer to come in um, just to kind of give you a frame of reference for that. Within Naviance, there are a few things that we encourage students to take a peek at along the way. Um, that are helpful through the college search, through career exploration, through trying to learn a little bit more about themselves. And so a few things that are under About Me. So this is Lumberjack's um, Naviance page. So Lumberjack is an eternal student at Oakwood. And right now he's a junior. And so there are two things under About Me. One is resume. And the second one is surveys from, from your school. So every student has been encouraged beginning freshman year to build a resume. And so in doing so, um, they can add anything from they have a job and when they had it or, you know, a little bit of information. Some of these are great examples and some of these are not great examples from when we, we showed students good and bad examples. But they can list the different types of activities they did. They can list if they have a leadership role, anything like that at all. Anything a student does in grades 9 through 12, they want to have in here. We get asked to share resumes internally for some awards and honors. And if a student doesn't have a resume listed, we can't share it, even if we know things about them. So definitely encourage students to do this. If a student does have his or her own or their own um, resume, they can list in here. I shared my Google Doc resume with my counselor. And make sure your counselor has that, that link to that Google Doc resume, and it's always accessible. So that's something that every student should be doing. And they just click on the little plus symbol and they add the type of activity and a little one line blurb about that activity. Then also under about me, there are surveys from your school. Lumberjack has a couple bonus ones because he's been around a while, but there's the junior survey student and the junior survey parent. Those will be the only two that your student can see. So the junior survey parent, this is a chance for you as a parent to um, to talk about your students, to talk about their, their strengths, to talk about what shaped them, um, some things you're, you're hopeful for for them. And so there's no right or wrong. Um, colleges don't care what you think at all about your, your, your children, um, but because they assume you'll think they're all perfect and wonderful. But we wanna hear your perspective because it helps us to guide and to support them. We might talk about colleges or scholarship ideas or essay ideas or just things for life and living and learning that could be helpful. So things like their, um, their strength, their character, um, compassion, sportsmanship, maturity, how their high school career has been pleasurable or painful, how they've grown in the past few years, some outstanding achievements, and then circumstances that have affected them along the way, and then the obstacles or how they've demonstrated strength, um, courage, resilience, all these kinds of things. And then what, what do you want us to know as we guide your student? And so this helps us to support them as we meet with them for their junior conferences, as we talk with them through the spring of junior year, over the summer, into the fall, as we're supporting them along the way. And so we encourage you, um, you're, you have to log in through your student's account, um, but then you have the chance to do this. If your student has two parents that are not, um, that both won't log in, your student can give the questions to one parent to email and the other one can do it in here if that's easier for you as a family. So we definitely encourage that both of those are in About Me, resume and surveys from your school. If for any reason you don't currently get emails from, from us on a semi-regular basis, under my account, you can, click, you can click to see if your student has added, I'm sorry, your student has added a, you as a parent or guardian. Lumberjack does not have any in here, but you can make sure your email address is in here 
as a parent or guardian. That way you get any email that we send out to um, juniors and their families. So those are a few things under about me. Under um, self-discovery, way back freshman and sophomore year, um, we like to do a couple personality interest assessments. The personality one is a mini Myers-Briggs. The career interest profiler is a Holland Code. And there are two different ways of looking at personality, interests, strengths, weaknesses, blind spots, learning styles, and then some careers that match your student. Then the other thing in here um, is under careers. So as a result of those assessments, um, someone can click on the different careers that are interesting to them, but under careers, if they clicked on the ones they liked, they clicked on the heart, those get added to their list of favorites. So students can keep a list of favorite careers and they can also explore, they can do self-discovery where they look at the career key or career clusters. So if they're not sure at all what they wanna do or they wanna explore, these are some fine places to do some playing and career searching. And then in colleges, we, um, we talked with all students about the super match and they had the chance to do the super match um, a, a couple of weeks ago, but basically looking at things like location, parts of the country or size of the city, academics, like what kinds of, um, what, what kinds of things they must have. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't click it right. There we go. Um, whether it's a bachelor's degree or what kinds of majors they might want to have. Admission, um, kind of where their grades and scores measure up compared to that school or how rigorous is the acceptance rate at that school. Um, do they take AP credits, for example? Looking at student life, um, are they interested in organizations, clubs, Greek life, ROTC, diversity, whether it's religious, gender, um, international, um, HBCU, different kinds of schools and different kinds of diversity. Institution characteristics like um, four-year schools, public, private. Retention rate is our students coming back from freshman year to sophomore year. Graduation rate is are they graduating on time in that four or five year degree plan? Are they very large schools to very small schools? Cost, um, so maximum tuition and fees. There are other places to play um, with cost ranging from um, like College Navigator or looking at a school. Each school has a net price calculator, so you can look more specifically. And then athletics to play or to watch by division. And then some resources if a student's looking for learning supports or they're looking for mental health supports or physical accessibility, um, they, can, they can take a peek. And at the end, there's the list of what a student likes. And they can see to what degree do different schools match. So University of Minnesota Twin Cities, its location wasn't quite where um, Lumberjack said he wanted to go, but most other things were right on, on target for, for, for Lumberjack. Schools can be compared, they can be pinned to compare, or they can be clicked on to be a favorite. Um, but it's a good place to find some schools that maybe they hadn't thought of before. They can save their searches. And there are several, Lumberjack has a few, um, but they can save different searches for different reasons along the way. And we encourage students to use different types of searches if they want to. And so back under colleges, there are other things like college match, there's an advanced college search, and then there are other searches out there too, ranging from niche to lots of others. And so it's worth taking a peek. And then ultimately any college that they click on the heart for, so they say they favorite, they can see colleges I'm thinking about, and they have a whole list of schools. They can see, is it an online application? Is it a common app with the CA common application? Do they happen to do mail only, like you mail it in still um, application? They can see rough deadlines for that school and they can track their level of interest in that school. And one of the goals for this spring and summer is to broaden their list so that midsummer to end of summer, they're narrow narrowing that list back down and thinking about where in the fall are they going to apply to schools. We encourage students to look at schools that are similar to what they think, but also challenge themselves by looking at a school that's different just to see, hey, is what I think really valid or hmm, maybe I need to open my eyes to some other ideas. So these are a few of the things, but then also in colleges, a student can look specifically at a school. So I'm gonna pick on Miami, Mr. Westner's alma mater. So you can do a search, so Miami, and you can see information on um, just kind of some pictures and videos. You can see an overview of the school itself. Some studies like, you know, the student faculty ratio, average class size, retention or students coming back freshman to sophomore year. You can see student life, like what's the area around it, what kinds of activities, clubs and, and things they have, what's the student body makeup of that campus. The admissions part is interesting because you can see general admissions, but if you scroll down, you can look at, okay, Oakwood students, based on an ACT, weighted GPA, where am I? So you look at this dashed line, that is the average accepted student at Miami from Oakwood um, with a 3.66 with a 28. This little blue person right here, that is Lumberjack. Lumberjack has a 3.91 with a 27. All the check green, all the check marks are accepted students. 
all the X's are students who are denied. A student with a circle starts out blue. That means that they're waitlisted or deferred. If it turns green, that means they're ultimately accepted. If it stayed red, that means they ultimately did not quite make it in. But you can see where a student fits compared to students from here who've applied to that particular school. And then under costs, um, you can see average tuition, room and board, net price, receiving percent receiving grant and aid. And then there's some spotlight and other things that you can play with. So these are some fun places to do some searching. Um, there's a lot of good information within the Navient site. And under the home screen at the very, very bottom, there is a list of different links that we've begun to create. And if, and if you have an idea that you think, wow, everybody in Oakwood needs to know about this website, let us know, it'll get added um, because we want our families to have as much support as they possibly can and as many ideas as they can um, and as many resources as possible to support um, our students through their college search process. So hopefully this is a good place to take a peek. If you haven't looked at it before, do that with your student, um, encourage them to take full advantage of some of the resources and supports that they have. And then a little bit more about the college app process. Mrs. Owens. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wessner, <laughs> Mrs. Lumpkins, and Mr. Wessner. Um, so just kind of, I want to take just a moment before we, we start on this. And you know, these have been some really weird times the last couple of years. And um, a lot of our students are dealing with um, stress to the level that we have not seen for a while. And I think I can speak for all three of us that we want this process, we know it's stressful. I mean, it, it, it just is. It's the first time your student has done something so big and we know it's stressful, but as Mr. Wessner alluded to at the very beginning, we understand and we accept the fact that this is their first time through. Um, and we remind ourselves of that every year. We've been through this a lot. And um, we have, like I said, in the last couple of years, especially when, when the seniors from the last two years haven't been able to actually visit the campuses and, and things changed so much and we had to change the way we were providing services. So we're thankful to get back to a more normal, if we can say that, um, process, but it is... Um, we, we do realize and we and we accept the fact because we deal with these students every day. We deal with with the mental health challenges, with the stress levels, with the anxiety, with just feeling overwhelmed. And I think we we do a really nice job of addressing all of those issues. We have a great team with the SEL people and with our administration and our teachers are awesome. Um, and we all come together because it, it's this is stressful, but there's also just life in general. So getting into this this specific process <clears throat> we um the main thing is is the students should be taking the lead um they absolutely should be like the things that mrs lumpkins just showed you from naviance that naviance is your student's account it is not the parent's account we want you to do the the parent survey and there's nothing wrong with sitting down with your student and kind of going through and having them show you maybe what they put in their resume. But um, I, I, had this, I had this comment this week from a parent who said, so I'm putting, I'm putting this stuff into Jimmy's, not name, not Jimmy, um, into Jimmy's Naviance resume. And I'm like, it, that's nice. We know you wanna be helpful. We wanna be helpful, but there are just things that your students need to be doing. So the students, are, it's their journey. They need to be taking the lead on this. Even the simple things, if your student wants to change a schedule, they can come talk to us or they can send us an email. If they're wanting to get a little more information about a college, they can come talk to us. We get a lot of emails from parents, which is fine. We love hearing from you, but it kind of is like, well, why, why isn't, you know, why isn't Jimmy or Sally reaching out to us? Um, so we really, you know, we really need to talk to them and, and we're going to pull them in on our responses. So, you know, maybe that's how you can help them become a little more independent a little more, you know, able to advocate for themselves. So this is their, their journey. And, and we also know that you're a big part of, of helping to support them just like we are. We're going to present the college application process to the seniors. We do that within the first two weeks of their senior year. We go into their English classes and, and quite honestly, it's usually always the first week. Um, it's a heck of a week because we have all these these class meetings, but but the priority is is to get into those senior English classes and present, 
you know, what the process is at Oakwood High School, what we need them to do, because we have to have a process, we have to have a system so things move smoothly and th there aren't any hiccups. So we're gonna go through that with them. There's also gonna be a meeting for senior parents in the fall. Um, so that, that's gonna to happen too, that you'll, you know, you'll be looped in on all of that too, as to what we've told your students and you'll be looped in on that too. So you'll get the same information. Deadlines are a hot topic. And I, I often tell the kids that we do a lot of really great things at Oakwood, but deadlines probably are not always the best thing that we do. We can be a little soft on that. And if you ask any of the seniors, the information that I'm sending out for scholarships, it will say deadline is firm, firm deadline, <laughs> because you know this is like the time where these deadlines are firm. Um, we understand that applications open for fall as early as August 1st, some of them even July 1st. We will meet the stated deadlines given by the student and those that are then confirmed by looking at the college website. The earliest deadline per NACAC, and NACAC is National Association for College Admission Counselors, Guide to Ethical Practice is October 15th. And that's the one that we adhere to. They say that colleges should not have a sooner and earlier um, deadline than that. And this is partly because schools are all coming back into session, high schools around the country, and we have to get summer grades added in. We have to get move-ins, you know, their, their schedules in. We have to get the kids, our own Oakwood kids, including seniors, landed in the correct classes. You know, they, they have a lot of schedule changes at the very beginning of the year. So we have a lot of things that we're doing. We're, we're doing those class meetings. We're, we're two days out and doing English, um, you know, presentations. And, and the, the main thing is we want those transcripts to be correct. And on the transcript are the credits for any junior high credits that are earned for high school credit, freshman, sophomore, junior, and the senior year schedule. So we need those to be correct. And we don't wanna rush that. So those transcripts are ready by mid-September. That also gives us and the teachers time to write their letters of recommendation. So we, we seem to, I don't, I don't know where it's coming from, but we were getting a lot of that. And, and it's not just Oakwood, it's other schools that I've talked to other school counselors where, kids are under the idea that they have this September 1 deadline and, and it's really, it's not a thing. September 1 is not a deadline. Um, so we need to, you know, take a step back and it seems to just kind of, the angst on those kiddos, um, it, it seems to be heightened for them. And we have to make sure that the transcript is right, that the information is correct, that we are putting out good information and to give us time to talk to the kids to do senior conferences. We do individual senior conferences and they're not gonna be missing out on anything because they're not gonna be missing any deadlines. So they are, you know, we want the kids to know that they're firm, but we also want to, to kind of diminish some of that, that anxiety that we saw a lot of this year. And I don't know if it was just kind of anxiety with coming back to a more normal school setting I'm hoping that's maybe what we could we could you know say that it that that's what it was that we could um, say that that they were just trying they were just maybe anxious about the the you know being in school for a full day um, all year so we're hoping that that maybe that we're just not going to have that issue as much this year so just want to put that information out there um, the college like I said the college application process we will go through all of that. And this goes into the next slide. And Mr. Westner and I are going to kind of tag team this one. But um, the essays, it's, it's a great idea. And I, I kind of jumped down there a little bit, Mr. Westner, about halfway down. So we'll, you can go back up and start with the top. But the essays, the English teachers will help a lot with the essays. And I know I love reading my seniors essays. So we're also another, we, we're also a set of eyes that can look at those essays and give some feedback if the students want. I love them because I love hearing what the kids have to say. I want to hear it in their voice. And that essay is a chance for those students to highlight their part of their life that maybe they can't, just doesn't fit on a blank on an application. So um, our English teachers, mostly it's Mrs. Morris and Mrs. Austic, do a really phenomenal job of taking them through that process 
And then the school counselors are also available too. And we love reading those essays. Um, Mr. Wessner, what do you, what about a little bit more about junior conferences and family conferences? Yeah. Um, so again, we're going to be meeting, we're, we're meeting in the process of meeting with the, uh, with those juniors, making sure they feel comfortable answering any questions that they have at this date. Um, getting to know them more on that just individual basis if we haven't had as much contact with them uh, yet. If this is your guys's first go around and uh, you would like to uh, kind of sit down and, and go through it, we, we strongly encourage that. Uh, reach out to us and we can get something set up for you guys with your student um, and kind of answer some questions. Maybe you have some specific uh, situations that you're not sure about. Um, we're here to help in any way we can to, cause I feel like if we alleviate the pressure on you, you can kind of help to keep everything kind of that calmness around, around the students during this time. So we wanted, we definitely want to answer your questions and make sure you feel comfortable with that, with that process. Uh, we are going to be one of the counselors. One of us is going to be here, uh, on Wednesdays throughout the summer um except for the week of fourth of july so that can be another time where we can set up uh some time to meet um whether it's your account your students counselor or not we're all here to help um that's what we want to do um we are offered during the year you know so we're going to be in the, those classroom sessions but we're also going to be offering help during timber and during the lunch hour uh for those students that that kind of just want an extra pair of eyes over it they're just a little bit uncomfortable getting started um we're here to help with that so we'll be having those dates out for them we'll have that um those dates for them when we meet with them during the uh the senior year um in that senior uh, classroom session um again we try to hit that as quickly as we can uh sometimes it rolls over into that second week because we, we we push back we used to start tuesday now we're wednesday so some we we work it out we we figure it out but we're in there as quickly as we can uh again we're here the week before as well while we're doing a lot of scheduling things we can answer some questions if something is if there's a lot of anxiety around a certain area not sure uh what's going on but we big thing is we have time on, on things we will be meeting with all of your students individually uh senior year again um and you know taking care of any individual specific questions getting to know a little bit more um and helping them out answer any questions they have that are coming up in their college search process questions they have about applications, those sorts of things. Um, and then we're always available uh, anytime for anything uh, outside of the college process. Uh, so um, bottom line, we just want to support you guys as much as we can. Thank you. That's all very important stuff. And I do want to, these are the resources we use to prepare this um, presentation. I do want to, um, when I was on here looking at the um, some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, some of the college um, admission counselors and, and high school ones. Um, there is an article by Jeff Selingo, S-E-L-I-N-G-O. He is the author of Who Gets In and Why, A Year Inside College Admissions. I believe that is a must read for anybody who is, well, and I just, I love reading that kind of stuff because I learn so much from it. Um, I've been in this for 27 years. This is my 27th year, and I still am just astounded by what I learn every year because this is changing all the time, too. So still astounded by that. But he has an article in the Atlantic Monthly, I think it is. And um, I'll try to get that link and set that out to you. But again, Jeff Selingo, S-E-L-I-N-G-O, who gets in and why a year in psychology admissions. And I highly, highly recommend it. It's a it's a great read um, and takes you inside a lot of the intricacies of um, the college admissions from that college um, admission desk. So we have opened this up, I believe. Um, let me double check with Tracy to make sure we're open with Mrs. Hale. And we're opening it up for any questions that you might have. Okay, it is open. She said it is open. So if you have any questions, you can put those in the chat and um, we can start answering those. If you think of something later, feel free to email one of us. Um, <clears throat> we will get back with you 
And um, hopefully in a very timely manner with spring break coming up, it might take a little longer, but um, we will get back with you as soon as, as possible. Um, anything, oh, looks like we have a question, maybe, or no. Have a question, place it here. Um, any other thoughts that maybe Mrs. Lumpkins, you're saying, oh, I wish I would have said that, or Mr. Westner, I wish I would have said that. I, I, I think that when I think about this, I, I, I too have a junior right now. I have a sophomore and a junior, and um, I walked my niece through this process a few years back, um, and she's now a fully functioning lawyer. But I think about um, allowing your students a chance to visit and see different kinds of places, allowing them to experience what they think they're looking for, the opposite of what they think they're looking for until they find a better sense of it. Because I think they don't have yet that experience to know really what they want or where they would feel most comfortable or where they would thrive. And so if they can get on some different kinds of campuses and they can explore some different places, I think that would really help them to become more aware of the possibilities <coughs> and of the places that will really um, click with them. And so hopefully this spring and summer, if we haven't, we're getting our, our kiddos on some campuses so they can see what they like and, and what's kind of inspiring them almost, so. Mm -hmm. One of the questions, how many kids apply early decisions? I don't know about the two of you, but I had one this year apply early decision. This year I had like seven or eight apply early decision. Usually I have two or three. So it was, I think it's, it's, it's not a large number who do because it is a commitment. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if, if someone gets in early, early decision means they've applied early, um, and typically that October, early November, they're going to hear early, maybe that December, maybe that January. But if they get in, they're saying, yes, I am going to that school. Um, in theory, it's regardless of any other circumstance, the one being finance, if, if the financial package doesn't really work, that's the one, the one exception to that. But it's really somebody who knows where they want to go. They know the plan works for their family and, and that's it. And then they will withdraw their other applications. Um, early action, a lot of students apply. Early action is that same idea. You apply early, you hear early, but you've taken action. You're going to hear a response. You're going to be able to think about it but you're not committed. You're not bound to that school. You still can consider other options. A lot of students do apply early action. Yeah, I do have a lot with the early action. Um, the other question is, do you recommend that students take the SAT? I said, we usually recommend they take one of each ACT and the SAT, but I will, I'm finishing this, this comment, but some, maybe even a majority have the, the ACT is just more popular. We, we have more students taking the ACT um, they maybe it's because it's the state test or what, but um, and and I think our kids are fatigued by testing. And if they, you know, they're taking that ACT and they're just like, I'm done, I'm fine. But but we do have some kids that take both the ACT and SAT. What else do you guys have to add to that? Um, I would say SAT was. I mean, so they have already an experience, and most likely they probably have two experiences with the PSAT, both sophomore and junior year if they just feel like that was a better test for them they like that experience a little bit better mm -hmm. i mean absolutely you can you can go through and and do that um, and but things have changed with the test optional policies um mm -hmm. of schools so there have been it's been nice seeing some students being like i'm good i'm done and that i mean i i it, it's kind of good to see a, a student be okay with backing out so always keep ramping it up i'm sorry i think i interrupted you mr Lincoln. sorry no, I almost interrupted you. It's okay. Um, I think about a student's strengths sometimes um, because the ACT has science on it that the SAT does not. Um, the, the format of the test is a little bit different. The timing is a little bit different. Even the types of questions is a little bit different. So I encourage students to think about um, the, 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 pre, the PSAT and the pre-ACT, looking at how those felt, worked, looked for them, and then using that as a guide in terms of the SAT and the ACT because Sometimes people tend to do better on one versus the other just by the makeup or the content or um, just the structure of that test. So it doesn't hurt to try both um, in the sense of getting some, some feedback and experience. Um, but I, Mr. Western, I agree with that test optional thing too, because um, some students are better or lesser test takers and that's okay either way. Um, but there are plenty of schools right now that are test optional as a choice. So um, it's worth looking at that too, just to see what a student wants. And they might apply one way to one school and another way to another based upon where they fit with respect to that student or with that college's application pool. So um, 
it's a personal thing and they're welcome. Students are welcome to come on in and talk that through. Um, we can look at their past scores and kind of discuss that if they want to, um, to use that as a guide too. So, yeah. Just heard that the University of Georgia systems are test optional again next year. And then University of California, I think the vote was today. Um, they were a little premature in announcing it that they're not doing them at all anymore, the tests. So it's inter the interesting times. Um, any suggestions on ACT prep courses? It's hard because we don't endorse like we, you know, we don't really endorse certain programs, but I, we do offer, you know, ACT prep in prior to like it was available prior to this junior year ACT, but, um, you know, Sugar Creek Educational Concept, I've heard really good things about them. There are all kinds of places around here that do the prep. And then there's also a lot of the free resources as well. I and Ian, I think that the best prep they're going to get is the curriculum that they're taking here every single day. What they're doing day in and day out is going to be their best prep. And then, yes, there are some, in, there's a lot of free stuff out there. Um, who are they, who's ACT partnered with? I know SAT is partnered with Khan Academy and with their PSAT score, they actually have access to kind of targeted prep. Um, Kaplan is at ACT. Mm -hmm. They're loosely tied, yes. Loosely and then, and, and I think with that too, though, a student can look at their pre-ACT or their PSAT and they can see what their strengths and weaknesses were. And especially in the case of the ACT, it's very teachable in the sense they can look at the types of questions that they struggle with, work on those specific skills. And that could be done independently. It could be done with a private tutor. It could be done as part of a program. It just depends on how independent that student is at working through things and whether, you know, what their motivation is. But you can look at those skill sets and work on turning them into a strength. And that's where, if, if I were doing any prep, I'd focus on those areas of weakness, whether it's areas of weakness in content or areas of weakness in how do I manage my time. Um, there are things students can do independently to improve too. I've also heard that it, sometimes if you have a nervous test taker, they know what they know. Um, sometimes if, it, if you have a really nervous test taker, it's getting them up early on a Saturday. It's taking them to some other location and they take a practice test. It's, it's practicing all of that because it's, it's all of that lead up and, um, you know, just kind of getting them used to that. So um, we're certainly not saying you have to pour a lot of money into ACT prep. There are resources that are out there. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but there are some resources out there and maybe kind of getting to the uh, crux of, is it just a nervous test taker or is it, you know, that we, like Mrs. Lumpkins was saying, we need to hone in on some specific concepts too. And the, a lot of it is also um, embedded in like, they, they do a lot of ACT prep leading up to that ACT in junior year that it's embedded, that the teachers have embedded it in their, their uh, curriculum too. Um, are, have you already done the individual junior conferences with students? And I answered, we'll be working on those conferences probably through the end of the school year. Sometimes, you know, we get, we kind of go through fits and, and can get a lot of them in and then something else comes up. So um, sometimes it's hard to, to track the kids down. <laughs> you know, they're, they're busy or they can't miss a class or whatever. So we do get through them. I know I was doing some of them last summer. Um, I was doing them through, throughout the summer a little bit too. And um, so it's, we, we do, we do try to we get them finished by the end of the school year. I don't know how you two are doing on yours, but, but we are working right on right in the middle. Them. Yep. We're working on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get there. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Blind did a few of mine while I was gone with my husband um, the week before winter break. So um, so she did a few of those and all of my juniors, I know, because I think this is one of my parents, all of my juniors have a copy of their transcript and they've been getting information, but the actual sitting down with me, I'm still working on that. Um, can parents attend these conferences? These, the ones that we're talking about, the junior conferences, those are individual conferences. Mr. Westner referred to the family conferences. So we need time to sit through and get, get through all of these with our juniors. And then we'll you know, open them up for the family conferences. But if you want to have a family conference with your student school counselor, then let that be known. Let that be known and, and we, can, we can make that work. We can absolutely make that work. But we do need a little bit of time with them individually. And then we'll also set up a separate one with the family, with the parents included as well. Okay. 
make sure you're talking to your students about, I, I go back to some of these memories that I have. Oh, you're welcome. I go back to these memories I had where a student came in and I, and forgive me if you've heard this before. I know Mrs. Lump, Mrs. Lumpkins and Mr. Wessner have, but I had a kiddo who came in for her junior conference. These are the schools I want to go to. They were all in New York and in the East Coast. And then when mom came in for the junior parent conference with me, she just kind of laughed. She goes, I don't know where you're getting this idea because you're not leaving the state of Ohio. And the kid breaks out crying and the mom is just like, well, she didn't handle it right. I mean, let's just say she the laughing and giggling about it didn't, didn't handle it. So I just kind of inched out of the room. I'm like, you two need to talk. So maybe make sure that you're having some of those conversations with your junior. If they don't seem to be wanting to engage much with that, maybe just talk about where you went to college, where their favorite aunt or uncle went to college, grandparents, um, you know, what other guardian, godparents or whatever, just kind of, you know, pull them into it a little bit. But if they're really resistant to it, you know, then, you know, you just have to, you have to kind of gauge the temperature in the room when you're bringing that stuff up. But it would be nice if you maybe said, you know, if, if you're paying for college, what are your parameters? You know, maybe you're like that mom who says you're not leaving the state. Um, because she had all these big ideas. The daughter had all these big ideas. It was, it was the most uncomfortable junior parent conference I've ever had. And I'm still talking, it's got to, it has to have been 15 years ago and I'm still traumatized by it. But I think it's a great, no, go ahead. Uh, I just, one thing I think that uh, can help in that process, I mean, the price of education, it's, it's expensive yeah. and you guys all have, you know, different plans and budgets and we try not to get into one, I think tool that is underutilized um, is the net price calculator at schools um, before you even go on that visit. Um, every school is required to have a net price calculator. So you can just type that into Google, Ohio State net price calculator, you're going to get uh, onto their page. Some are better than others. Some are more detailed than others and provide better idea. It's not going to tell you what it's going to cost, but it's going to give you a really good idea. Um, hey, is this doable? Is this something uh, that's there. So they're going to ask you a ton of different things, maybe some financial information. I'm um, going to ask you some information about your, your student. Um, I think that's just something that I don't know if we get that out uh, always enough. I we try to always do that. I don't know if it's utilized enough within that process, um, especially if you're really not sure on, on, on what really the costs are. It's a great place to start uh, on any of their college websites. Again, they're required to have it on there. And take a look too, like at a college's scholarship page, look at their through admissions or through scholarship page, or even through the department pages at a college to see are the departmental scholarships that a student could get. Um, even look at sites like, um, like fastweb.com or other scholarship search sites and, and be proactive in seeing what possible financial supports there are um, to, to go after and engage in that conversation regularly about what, what is reasonable for your family? What can you pull off financially, distance-wise in terms of trans, the transportation getting to and from? Um, you know, just talk about the things that are important to you and to your student and the things that are parameters that are kind of guiding the process that, you know, might feel like they're like kind of, you know, limiting them a little bit, but they're not. They're giving them possibilities because a student might go to school right here in Dayton, Ohio, and they might live at home and go to Wright State but they could do a study abroad for a year because they do that. Who knows? I just threw that out as an example, but there are different ways of looking at this in terms of getting that full experience that they want to have, but talking about how that can happen together along the way. It's a journey. And we will have that financial aid night will be in September. So you'll have the senior parent night one night, you'll have an open house one night. We're going to be taking a lot of your time. And then there's a financial aid night um, where, and I, I'll just tell you, cause we bring in somebody from the university of Dayton and they're going to tell you that the government says that the very number one source for funding college is the parent, um, full rides are rare. Um, but there is money, there is scholarship money out there. And, um, you know, we put out all of the scholarship information that we get you know, for like our local scholarships and such, but Mrs. Lumpkins brings up a really good point is looking at the colleges that, that your student is interested in, um, because that is going to ultimately be the number one source of financial aid is going to be from the college that your student matriculates to, because there's going to be all of those embedded scholarships and such. Um, just so you know, I mean, the, the very highly selective colleges aren't going to give a lot of merit money, if any. Um, there are some other, and th this article that I hope I'm going to be able to uh, link, 
talks a lot about, you know, the, the selective colleges and the benefits and the, um, and the, you know, the cons of that, you know, um, and there are some real gem colleges that are, that are lesser known. They don't have that, that prestigious reputation, but your student's going to get an absolutely wonderful education there. So, um, so that's all part of that. I kind of drifted back into the college searching, but, um, but let me get back on track. Financial aid night is going to be in September and also be having those conversations with your kids because about like what your, um, what your parameters are. If you're paying for college, you get to decide how you spend your money and, and you get to have a say in that. Um, and hopefully it can be a very nice conversation um, versus what I witnessed a couple of years ago. So it was bad. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> We're so glad you're here tonight. Um, tell all your junior parent friends this will be posted on the class of 2023 um, website, I believe, or, or Tracy will put, Mrs. Hale will put it on the, the website. I don't know if it'll be tonight, might be tomorrow, um, but it will be posted soon. Um, if you are traveling for spring break, please travel safely. Um, we always tell your kids to make really good decisions, so we'll probably be reminding them of that tomorrow. And um, thank you for giving us wonderful kids to work with. We love what we do. We love working with your kids. Um, but we might enjoy spring break, too, ourselves. So anyway, thank you so much for tonight. You two want to say good night? Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night.